I get that. Hi, welcome to Art Talk, and I want to test out my magic carrot. Boom, look at that. I'm Andy Jones, and I've taught literally thousands of people to paint. If you have any interest in painting, I can teach you how to do it. Today on this episode, we are beginning a series of uh, vegetable paintings. So remember, eat your vegetables. We're starting out with our carrot, and there will be a downloadable uh, design that is in the description box below, as well as a link to our Art Talk kit, which has 17 beautiful colors of folk art paint, as well as a link to our beautiful Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush Set. We're going to be doing a, a very important vegetable today. We are. For our eyesight, which we, is very important in painting. Yes, it is. And I don't know if that's uh, just folklore or old wives' tales or whatever, but I have, um, I was going to say with my trifocals, I have reasonably good vision, but I do love a good carrot. We are going to start, um, this is kind of um, an old world style or very traditional style of painting. We've got a dramatic dark background and a very vibrant uh, main subject matter. And so we are going to start by painting our background and then we'll do our table, then we'll paint our subject. So very logical way to work on this. There are a few things that we're going to do that I want to call your attention to. Because we're painting a bright orange carrot on a black background, it is important that we keep the black out of our carrot. We want the white of the primed canvas to show through and help that orange color glow a little bit. So I'm going to put some colors out on my palette that we're going to need. Right off the bat, I'm going to put out some pure black. And I'm also going to put out some um, asphaltum on my palette. And we are doing this because we don't want a solid, boring black background. We need something to break up the background a little bit so that it has some visual interest for our viewer. And you'll hear me talk about creating visual interest quite a bit um, throughout uh, the Art Talk lessons. All right, so I've got a three quarter inch flat brush, or I could probably use a one inch brush. Let's go ahead and use a, a big boy here. So I'm going to start with the pure black and we are going to come over here to the left side of the canvas and basically down to the table line. And I'm leaving a little bit of a cheat line here so that I can see where my table is really supposed to be. This is nice. I think this kind of mimics modern food photography. A lot of food photography is being done on like slate and really dark backgrounds. So I think this is well, it makes, maybe a classic style, but it, it looks very modern. Well, it, it, uh, it makes the food show off very, very well. Uh, there are slate cheese boards that you can uh, find in stores these days. I love a good cheese board. And actually, of course, I don't even need the board underneath the cheese. Just unwrap it and let's get to the cheese. All right, so keeping out of the carrot as best I can. That way I don't have to worry about the black background dulling down this bright orange carrot. And Dylan and I um, were discussing uh, the little baby carrots with the ends all trimmed off. I've got a beautiful model here on the table with all these great little uh, carrot uh, fronds on it. But they do sell the little baby carrots and they've trimmed off the ends of them. And I let Dylan know that that was Bugs Bunny's preferred carrot style to eat, the trimmed ends on there. But if you uh, can find really pretty uh, carrots in your uh, grocery store with the ends on them. They are delicious in salads, so don't just toss them away. They are very, very good to eat. And of course, you can take um, a carrot and, you know, you can eat them, you know, traditionally they're, uh, you know, sliced up or grated up into carrots or um, coleslaw and things like that. But you can also take a vegetable peeler and cut long strips of carrots and deep fry them until oh, they're deliciously crisp. That's an interesting one. <laughs> they are. Believe me, Dylan, if there's a fried food, I am pretty familiar with it. I mean, that sounds okay. Like people fry pickles. So. Yes. Well, the, the fried little carrot strips are absolutely delicious. Uh, they're a little, um, they're one of those kind of sweet and savory things. 
you know, some salt and uh, pepper on them, and then a little bit uh, sweet from the carrots themselves. They're just delicious. I'm always in favor of taking something that should be completely healthy and turning it into something that is <laughs> delicious and not so good for you. But, you know, that's how I roll. But carrots are good. I think they are probably the first food I remember growing in my family garden. And did you have so, a bumper crop of carrots? Uh, I mean, yes, I would say like we had quite a few. Okay. You know, it was, it was kind of fun because they're a little bit colder weather, right? Like we yes, get them uh -huh. kind of towards the end of the season. So they are another, if you're interested in growing fun vegetables that uh, usually produce a good crop and are easy to grow are radishes. You get that little package of radish seeds and then like two weeks, you've got little radishes springing up and they are, they are delicious as well as carrots are. They're a little bit uh, more savory. All right, so in this little area right here, just so our background isn't solid black, and that is, it's okay, but it's not really fun to just look at a solid black background. I'm picking up some asphaltum on my brush, and I didn't really clean my brush. I would want to add this asphaltum in to create a little bit of a area of interest in the back of our painting. And then I'm going to take a paper towel, and hopefully this is going to work for me here, uh, like it did uh, in the one that you see on the easel. I'm just gonna tap and pat and lighten that area up. So it's a little bit of a light area there. And then I'll take another paper towel here, and we'll kind of fold this into a little softer pad and we'll just kind of sweep down, softening that background. And I think that's probably where I'm going to leave that as I continue to play with it. All right, that's good enough. It's softly blended. It's a little bit of a light area and it's something just to add that visual interest that you want. So we now have um, a table to rest our uh, carrot on and I'm going to put out some titanium white and some burnt umber because we want this table to be lighter, but we definitely don't want it to be um, the focal point of our painting. So let me move my delightful model out of the way. And now we've got some burnt umber out there as well. And I'm going to take my big one inch brush and I'm going to use that uh, to paint the table. So I'm going to pick up titanium white and the black and asphaltum that were in the brush and add some burnt umber to it. So we'll create a gray brown color here. So as a kid, Dylan, were you a big vegetable eater or were you super picky and not liking vegetables? I think I was pretty picky, but I love a novelty and carrots seemed very novel to just pull out of the ground and eat. Well, I mean, did you watch Bugs Bunny growing up? I did, I did, of so course. So you knew that Bugs Bunny being the coolest um, rabbit on television, it was probably pretty cool to eat. It was pretty, yes. The, uh, the, Good role model. Yes. Well, you know, if, if we're going to talk Bugs Bunny as a role model, let's consider that he was quite the role model. He um, stood up to uh, predatory hunters. Um, <laughs> He stood up to unscrupulous building practices. When uh, Elmer Fudd was trying to bulldoze his rabbit hole, he you know, stood up to that and fought that. He was um, in favor of square dancing, opera. I mean, the, the rabbit had it all going on. There wasn't anything that that Well-rounded rabbit. rabbit. He was. And, you know, he was just, I mean, as a kid, it just didn't get any better than Bugs Bunny because he could thwart. I mean, Elmer Fudd had a shotgun pointed at him all the time and Bugs could simply take his magic carrot, stick it in the shotgun and the shotgun would blow up. Bugs Bunny grew the best carrots ever. Bulletproof, if you will. <laughs> Bulletproof carrots, of course. And he could stop conflicts in bar rooms. You know, he... Um, uh, could do magic. He was just the best bunny ever. 
All right, so we're just lightening this uh, brown mixture up a little bit and not really working too hard to make any of this look like anything. It's darker brown and a lighter brown. So I'm going to wipe my brush off now just to get all of that excess paint out of the brush. And I'm going to begin to blend a little bit to soften this because I don't want this to uh, be full of uh, busy brush marks because that's going to take away from our beautiful carrot. Always have to remember what the star of the show is and what the supporting characters are. So long light strips, we're going to smooth that out. And what I want to do next is to kind of blur the line uh, between the table and the background. So I'm going to pick up black on part of the brush and just leave whatever was in there, uh, there, not mess with that at all. And I'm going to turn my canvas a little bit. And what I want to do is to put the softened black on the black area and then just kind of blend right along that line And this is a kind of a quick cheating way to create that soft transition without working too hard. Because I don't mind working hard, but I don't think painting should be hard work. So we'll have to embroider that on a pillow. I think this is probably our first episode in the series that really does kind of this classic produce painting technique. We did do a lemon, one of your first lemons, but this yes. is... This kind of is a, much more a deeper dive into some traditional painting techniques. And it's, it's fun to do that sort of thing. And I'm going to call this background finished. Um, it looks perfectly fine to me. When I am working on a painting and I come to a stage like this, I'm going to look at it and give it a quick evaluation. And if things don't look bad, then we're ready to stop. If you see something that's a problem, like um, I was talking with a student one time and we were painting something and I think we were painting a pot and we had a rust mark on it. And she goes, oh, she goes, my rust mark looks like a bunny. And I'm like, well, then you need to change that because you want it to look like a rust mark and not something else. So if there's a problem that jumps out at you, fix it. If there are no problems, then you're ready to move on. So we are going to force dry this before we move on to painting our carrot. I'd like to take a minute to thank Plaid Enterprises for sponsoring Art Talk. They are the makers of Folk Art Acrylics, which I absolutely love using. I've used this paint since I was a young tot, and now that I'm an old fart, I still use this paint. We have a 17-piece set that we've curated just for you. Ordering information is in the description below, and we also have great brushes for you. We have a seven-piece set of Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. These are absolutely incredible. I use them every time I paint. <laughs> And I've never done that in my entire life. Now, let's get back to our video. All right, we are back and our canvas is now dry. So what I want to do now is I've got my same brush that I just used uh, to uh, create the table. I haven't cleaned it out, I've just wiped it out. But I'm going to pick up some of this kind of table color here, this kind of gray-brown mixture. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of black and a little bit of asphaltum together on one side of that brush because I want to create a shadow, but I don't want the shadow to be super, super dark. All right, now I'm going to start kind of right where the carrot's resting on this table, and I'm going to go underneath the carrot, and you can see that I'm kind of dry brushing, scrubbing this on, and we're going to come around the end of the carrot back here and where our carrot tops will be, not to be confused with the, the comedian, carrot <laughs> the carrot top. All right, so I picked up a little water on the corner of the brush that has more paint in it. And we're going to just tap and pat some of that on, scrubbing a little bit, picking up a little bit more water on the corner. And we're going to play with this and scrub it out, softening it. And this is really all I'm going to do for the shadow because we're going to put carrot tops over here. Again, not a fleet of the comedians. 
but uh, the actual green carrot tops over there. So now I've anchored my carrot to sit on the table and we're gonna take another moment and get this nice and dry. I don't know, is Stephen gonna edit this? Mm -hmm. All right, so Stephen's gonna have to find a picture actually of carrot top. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking about putting the carrot top over here, he can superimpose carrot tops. <laughs> can probably do that. Okay, because I think that would be mm -hmm. just more funny than it should be. All right, we are back with our dry shadow there. And I need the main color of my carrot, which is going to be pure orange. And the real art talk word here would be local color. So anytime something uh, has a general color to it, whether it's like if you're painting a leaf, your local color is probably going to be a green. Or if you're painting a banana, your local color is yellow. We're painting a carrot and our local color is going to be orange. Now what shade of orange you use is up to you. I love pure orange because it is a very bright uh, kind of clean orange. It doesn't have uh, white in it. Uh, white would make this um, already kind of, would instantly make it a, a duller, more muted color, and we want something vibrant to begin our carrot with. All right, so best practices, once you've used your palette knife, always clean it off so it's ready to go. And I'm going to use Let's see, a three quarter inch flat brush because there's plenty of room here for this size brush. Okay, don't think you need a tiny brush. Mo most people use brushes that are too small. Uh, usually the bigger the brush you can use, the better off you are going to be. And we're going to put a wash of color on here. So I'm going to take my brush and wet it with water and I want to thin down my pure orange so that it is more transparent. So you could see when I brush that on, um, you can see the little pencil lines that, where I sketched my carrot on here right through the orange, and that's perfectly fine. And this is one reason that we wanted to keep as much of the black and dark color out of our carrot as we could, because you can see that we get this beautiful, luminous uh, orange color because of our transparent pure orange and I'm dabbing and kind of stroking this orange on this is simply the foundation of the carrot we're going to do more to it we're going to add more orange we're going to add some shading colors to it so much more to come but this is giving us our lightest orange color to our carrot so we're starting light and we'll be working light to dark and working uh, with uh, transparent washes of color is also a great nod to uh, traditional art techniques. Uh, color, transparent colors and glazing really uh, began with the uh, Von Eck brothers in uh, kind of the late Gothic, early Renaissance styles of painting in Northern Europe. They are credited with the development of oil painting don't know that that's absolutely the truth, but I'm willing to buy into it. And so these kind of glazes of colors have been uh, an art tradition for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so here in the, um, I guess early 2020s, you're uh, getting to go back and use some very, very traditional techniques. All right, I'm about happy with this. One thing I am going to do is really emphasize kind of the curvature of the carrot by following the contour of the rounded carrot just with the corner of my brush and bringing a little bit stronger color onto the carrot. All right, so we've got our first layer of color on and it's super wet. You can see that it's shiny and very, very wet and we need to carefully dry this. If you're using a hair dryer, don't blast it because you could spread um, this paint out. So go gentle and we're gonna dry this and then come back and darken our carrot. We are back with our first color wash on our carrot and it's nice and dry so we can go back and paint on it. And that's one of the fabulous things about acrylic paint. Once it's dry, it's water resistant. Um, I can paint on top of this as much as I want to and I'm never going to disturb this underlayer. You have to make sure that your paint is completely dry. 
If it's partially dry, you can start to lift it up, which we don't want. All right, so again, I'm going to take some pure orange, this time with no water, just my brush was damp, and I'm going to begin to intensify this orange color more along the outer edges of the carrot. And I can bring some of that down and across the bottom of the carrot and I can work some of that up. Uh, these little marks, they're turning out pretty nice. So we'll just go with that. Uh, it's, you know, giving the carrot some texture just by dragging our sparsely loaded brush across the dry surface. And I'm not trying to do any particular kind of stroke or anything fancy like that. We're just deepening the top and the bottom of the carrot, letting this center portion look more rounded. So that's how we're creating form here on this little carrot. All right, I'm going to set my brush down and put a little apple red out on my palette. And one of the great things about painting um, fruits and vegetables is you get to take all sorts of artistic license with them. I can make this carrot as red and vibrant as I want to. You can turn apples into like almost hot pink apples if you want. You can do anything you want. And there's probably a color, coloration like that somewhere in nature. So I added a little apple red to my orange and I did it mostly just on one corner of the brush. And I'm going to take that corner and I'm going to tap and dab a little bit of this on. just making this carrot a little bit rosier and ultimately a little more appetizing because no one wants to paint a fruit that you would not enjoy eating. Uh, probably the one example of that, well, he didn't really paint rotten fruit, but Paul Cezanne was an incredibly slow painter. And if he was doing a still life of fruit, he ultimately had to get wax fruit because all of his models were rotting before he could get them painted. So another fun fact there, um, if you were wondering if everyone painted fast or slow, you know that Cezanne was among the slower painters. We're going to add kind of this uh, apple red color along the top and bottom again to make sure that our center of the carrot stays lighter. And you can adjust this to suit your specific carrot desires whether you want your carrot redder or more orangey. You could just do this with uh, pure orange if you wanted to. I like using this big brush because it covers a lot of ground and gives me kind of a nubbly uh, texture. If you're running out of paint, you can pick up a little water, blot your brush on a towel, and continue on with this. And every now and then I do just kind of dab a little bit with the corner of the brush because carrots don't really have a lot of texture to them, but they're also not uh, smooth. And when you get more room on your carrot, you need to use bigger, bolder brush marks. And then I do want to darken this even more, so I'm going to pick up a little asphaltum on the darker side of the brush and right around kind of where the top of the carrot is, I'm going to deepen one side of that. And then a little tip, I'm just flipping my brush over so that I can kind of tap and pat and soften that a little bit to kind of make that not such a harsh transition there. All right, so once again, we're gonna stop and dry this. There's no need to try to force your way through a painting and rush to make the next step happen. Do one step, dry it, and then come back and do the next step. All right, my carrot is dry and we are ready to move on. I'm going to take, uh, this is a number 10 filbert brush and I'm going to dampen this brush, blot it on a towel, and I'm gonna pick up a little orange and a little asphaltum. And we're just going each time a little deeper a little darker and you can still see that we have our very light original glaze showing but with this color on my brush I can come in and tap 
and dab and really add a nice bit of darkness uh, to the carrot. You gotta have dark if you're going to have nice highlights to show up. That is probably one of the most important um, art uh, facts um, that you can learn. I remember uh, teaching uh, a white flower to a group one time and you know we started to put the shading on and this one lady says, oh, that's gonna make my flower too dark. And I'm like, if you don't get this dark now, your highlights are never going to show up. So you have to make sure that you have adequate dark values in order to have highlights show up. So continuing with my asphaltum and tapping and dabbing and just creating these little marks on our carrot. We are uh, creating visual interest as well as uh, value contrast in our painting. So I'm trying to sneak in all of these kind of fancy art words for you, which... It is art talk after all. It is art talk after all. And I know I do a lot of talking and we are trying to squeeze a little art in here today. Some of these terms will become very second nature to you as you continue to paint and uh, you will find yourself uh, talking about something and not even painting related, you'll say, oh, that needs to be a darker value. You know, if you're picking out a, a new throw pillow for your couch, you, you might think to yourself, oh, that's simply just not dark enough. I need a deeper value of that color. Something to add a little pizzazz to the room. All right, so still with the asphaltum, I'm gonna do a little bit of this along the top of the carrot, but not quite as much. And you could see that that little area right here almost just disappears into the background. And that, my friend Dylan, is creating what is known as a lost edge. Now, we will do a whole episode of Art Talk about lost and found edges. That'll be a, be a barn burner of a video, but really important uh, technique to talk about. So we'll have to put that on the list of subjects we absolutely have to cover. It creates a really nice uh, visual interest in your painting because there are some things that you see and some things that are simply implied in the painting. We are just about done with our dark shading on our carrot and we don't want it to look rotten, but we do need to have some dark, some medium, and some light values on our carrot. Now I could dry this or I could just simply uh, leave it alone for a minute because there's not that much water uh, on the carrot right now. So I'm just wiping out my filbert brush and I will pick up oh a number 12 flat brush and I will put out some medium yellow on my palette because now we're putting out light colors. And what I want to do is to pick up some medium yellow and a small amount of pure orange. I want this to be a much lighter yellowy orange color. And if I'm trying to describe a color to you, I usually like to use the predominant color in the description first. So this will be a yellow orange color so that you know that that is different from an orangey yellow color. All right, so that's a little confusing, but it's the best way to describe things. All right, I'm going to take some of the excess paint off of my brush simply by just touching it on the uh, paper towel. And I'm going to begin, I'm gonna lay the brush with the flat surface of the brush parallel to the canvas. And I'm going to very lightly just tap and pat on a little bit of this yellowy orange color. It's very satisfying. Well, thank you. And the intensity of our medium yellow is super, super bright. On the color wheel, yellow and orange are the most intense colors that you can work with. So we were working with both of them here and you get this very, very intensely kind of yellowy highlight color. And I'm not covering everything up. This is a very sparse amount of paint and you can see uh, the other colors showing underneath it. 
So just putting that on, kind of tapping and patting, and that's all of this kind of yellowy orange highlight that we need on there. So I'm going to take a big risk here and I'm going to drag out my trusty flexible metal blade palette knife, which I adore, and we're gonna pop on some of these very bright highlights. And you could do it with just plain white, but I think it might be nice to make this a uh, slightly white with a little tiny tinge of yellow to it. So you can see I've got white on my palette knife and I'm going to touch the yellow onto my palette knife there and that's way too much paint but I'm going to uh, soften this on my palette by tapping and patting and this will take all the excess paint off of my palette knife and leave me with virtually nothing on there and when it's virtually Nothing on there that's just the exact right amount of paint that you want and you can apply these highlights and you can see me just kind of scratching all over the, the carrot and very little paint is coming off because there's almost no paint on the palette knife. And so I'm going to come back with a little bit more white on the palette knife and add just a little bit of a highlight. Now I've picked up a little tiny bit of extra paint on the edges of the palette knife and we're going to put on a little bit stronger highlight. And this can be a little bit intimidating. Um, you just, uh, like Julia Child says, you have to have the courage of your convictions. And you just kind of go with it, adding a little bit more right down the center of my carrot. And I'm going to leave that alone just like that. We're going to get out some uh, green colors we're going to paint those fluffy tops of our carrot and I'm going to be using some lime green thicket some medium yellow and white which I already have out on my palette All right, I am going to take my liner brush, which is not something I use terribly often, but I do need it to, um, well, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do this. So I'm thinning out some uh, thicket, which seems like an odd thing to do to thin out thicket, but I've added a little bit of lime green to it, so it's not quite so dark. And I'm going to paint uh, the little uh, stems that connect uh, the carrot uh, tops to the carrots. I'm just dabbing some green on and then I will pull a stem out and if your paint is not thin enough it's not going to flow off of your brush and you will end up with very very thick lines. So that's one way you can do it. If you are not feeling super confident with your liner brush skills I'll show you another way to do that. I'm going to take my big three-quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to pinch and wipe it till I get a very nice sharp chisel edge on the brush. And I'll take the same green color and you can use the chisel edge of the brush, stand the brush up and with no pressure on the brush you can create a stem this way. So as the good old expression goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So if you're unsure about how to do it one way, there is another way that you can do this. So I'm just gonna put a few of these lines on there like that. And I'm going to take the thicket and the lime green, and I'm going to start to use uh, my flat brush to create those little lacy uh, leafy tops. So not too much paint on the brush. And I'm going to dab a little segment of that on and then as I've got a little bit bigger area, I can dab more with the flat surface of the brush. What I don't want to do is to create a solid mass of green. You could see that I've got um, this kind of broken area. It's a suggestion. It is a suggestion of these leafy greens. And one thing you need to remember is you don't have to beat the viewer over the head with information. 
Um, I'm sure that anybody that's looking at this kind of realizes that that's a carrot and this is probably the green top of the carrot. So the green indication of the uh, fluffy little fronds at the end is really all that the viewer needs. They're going to understand that's carrot without any problem. All right, so I picked up a little bit more lime green. I'm going to pick up some medium yellow. And I'm just brush mixing a lighter color here. And I'm going to add a little bit of a white to this. And this may be too light. Not sure yet until I check it on my palette. If you didn't know this already, let me let you know that you cannot judge color from any distance. Um, if you want to see if something is the same color, they need to be next to each other or one on top of the other. That's why when you're shopping for clothes and you see a navy blue uh, top and you see some pants and you think, oh, those are the same navy blue. Until you get them together, you can't ever be sure. All right, so let's take uh, some color off of our brush so we have less paint there and that's a pretty nice color I have to say just to give a little bit of some light and airiness to our uh, fronds on our carrots. All right now those have a little bit of a distinctive mark to them and I'm not really in love with that so I'm going to take my palette knife tap and pat on my palette where there's very little paint make sure that I've taken even more off and then I can come back and simply add in some of this lighter color and a less distinct shape. And don't try to have any preconceived notion about exactly how this is going to look because as soon as you try to pre-plan, those plans are going to fall apart. Just like every other kind of plan you work so hard on. Sometimes a little pre-planning is good, but most of the time, a general idea and things will fall together for you. All right, Dylan, I think we are just about finished with our carrot, unless you have any other delicious carroty commentary for us. Well, it's always the question of what was Bugs looking for when he says, what's up, Doc? What, what is he asking? It, that's just a general, you know, a greeting. Of, a, a greeting toward the person who's always trying to kill him. <laughs> but we, you know, we've got to, you know, thank Bugs Bunny for making lots of kids love carrots and also introducing us to so much classical music. Thanks for joining us uh, on another episode of Art Talk. The link for the downloadable pattern is in the description box below, along with the link to the Art Talk kit, which has 17 beautiful colors of folk art acrylics for you. We also have a link to our Folk Art Select Firm Bristle brush set. I want you to like and subscribe to the Plaid Crafts YouTube channel, and then remember to click the notification bell so that you can get a notification each time we upload a new episode of Art Talk. If you'd like to leave a compliment, please do so in the comment section below, or you can email us at art underscore talk at platonline.com.